Thank you, Brother Pat, for those gracious words. Those were pretty profound words. Amen. I um, want to read the text that I'm going to be covering, um, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And in Romans 9, 11, for the children, not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, not of works, but of him that calleth. Uh, that put the focus on somebody else. But Ephesians 1, 9 and 10, having made known unto us, isn't that good? Having made known unto us, the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth, even in him. Ephesians 3.11 according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, if what I just read were all that I ever spoke, it would be enough. But that really isn't why we came. You didn't really come to hear me stand up here and read scripture, right? You could do that at home. We've come together to hear the scriptures enlarged upon, opened up through preaching. The preaching. We've come to let the prophets speak, two or three, and let the others judge. We come to rightly judge or discern the word of God. We've come to let this right judgment sink down into our ears. God doesn't make mindless drones. Men make mindless drones. God doesn't make mindless drones that just read the scripture and then sit down. This is not what God's doing. Now, there may be a time we have scripture showers and they're a blessed thing where we only speak the scriptures. Oh, it's a blessed thing that God's given us a blessed word, but he's given us saints of the most high God that can give you the sense of what he said. <laughs> yeah, we need that. We need that. We need, we need not, there's not any one of us that has it all except for Christ. Now he, he has it all. But see, now that same Christ has been dispersed into all of you. He's in you. You're alive in Christ. What does that mean? That means now you have, you have him abiding in you. And when we come together, he can express himself. But only as the body works together in harmony. As the gifts that he's put in you are used, well then... I can see what happened. Christ in you got out of you. <laughs> I want him to get out of me in this message in the right sense. You know what I mean. But it pleased God. Now, I asked you, does it please you? It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them. Save them all. Save them that believe. Believe what? Believe what was preached. <laughs> they preached Christ. And somebody believed it. What happened? He was saved. He said, wait, 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 wait. It's not that easy. Oh, it's exactly. That's the way it happens. You believe the record that God gave of his son. And what happened? God put you into Christ. Well, I'm telling you, this is the gospel. For the word of God, the word of God, not the word of Bob. I ver verified it. That even in the original, it doesn't say the word of Bob. It says the word of God is quick 
and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So what's my calling? Is to make the word of God the word of Bob. You see what I'm saying? It's as it becomes my gospel, as I'm made alive, as I'm, as I'm enlarged and I'm, I'm able to stand in the day of adversity, now God can use me as an arrow. Shoot, God shoots a lot of arrows. God doesn't give up. Remember the man, he stopped shooting, and the prophet was angry with him. No, no. God doesn't sh stop shooting. <laughs> He's, his, his purpose is going to stand. I am talking about the eternal purpose of God. And he's going to do all this. You know, only God can do this. Only God can, from the very beginning, he can tell everyone what he's going to do. The enemy's right there. I, uh, by, by the way, Lucifer, come here. Satan, come here. Yo, dragon, come here. I want to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm, through the woman here, the one that you've deceived, I'm going to crush your head. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. And now he, he lives his whole time trying to... to, to trying to, to stop God from doing what God said he's going to do, but he only facilitated it. That's what Brother Pat, he facilitated it. Now he just proved that he's not omniscient, right? He doesn't know what's going on. He just, very limited. He's on a chain. He's under a chain of darkness. He can't understand, but we can. We can know and understand God. In fact, if you want to boast... This is the thing you really ought to boast in. You say, well, I, I feel like boasting. Well, start telling me about how you know and understand God. And I'll boast along with you. God makes his word effective. See, God's word is effective, but, but it, it's the word of God. God backs his word. In other words, he makes it relevant. You believe the record that God gave of his son, God will make it relevant. In other words, he'll, he'll make it to where we, you'll be able to stand in the day of adversity. Well, we got a lot of word. I mean, we can't go through all of it. Uh, he, he's given us some specific things to think about when you start thinking about the purpose of God. And I read the four, my four points. I read, I read, those are my four points. Those four scriptures, you can't help read those four scriptures and say, well, I'm not going to talk about this or this. There's, they kind of drive the thought, don't they? I mean, you read those four scriptures, you, you can't come away thinking that salvation has anything to do with us. I can't, there's too many his in them, in them scriptures. There's too, too many he's in that scriptures. Salvation's really about God. Jesus is the son of God, the one who's written you remember on his thigh, it's written, the word of God. So he laid aside, he came here, took upon him the form of a servant. He laid aside the, the prerogatives of deity, and he beat the devil as a man. That, that's what he did. He, as a man, he laid aside. He, he could walk on the water, but he didn't use those kind of powers when he was hanging on the cross. Did he? he, in his own flesh, put away sin. By the sacrifice of himself. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Why? Because this is the way it had to be done. Sin, in all of its totality, must be put away if God's eternal purpose is going to work. It had to happen. So you can't really talk about God's eternal purpose without talking about he put, he put sin away. Well, now, how do we... How is that effectuated to us? We believe that he put sin away. And as you believe that, well, see, you, now you're going to be able to have confidence and assurance in the day of temptation because he put my sin. If he could take my sin away, well, then he can help me to stand in the, in the time of trouble. So each one, as they come up here and they stand before us, and they, they're going to talk about the word of God. That's what We've come to hear the word of God expounded. Why? Because in it, in it, see, is the wisdom of God, the, the righteousness of God, the justification of men and of God. It's all brought to the surface here. We're like oracles, oracles of God. God's speaking to us, and he's doing it through his people because they house the Christ that he 
is even at his own right hand. See, it, it, I, I was thinking, though, some of the things that Brother Pat said, I, I thought, you know, that's just, just the way Christ would have said it. Why? Because Christ is in him. He's in him. He's alive. He's living Amen. to the people that speak for him. God, well, here's, here's a thought. God has a will. Oh, you hear a lot about wills today. A lot of people about the will of man. God will not violate your, your will. God will not do anything to violate your... What? Does that, that means I'm not going to be saved, right? Because I guarantee you this what the will of man is not to come and bow down before the king. That's not the will of man. The will of man is to do what he wants to do. Isn't that what will means? I get to do what I want. Well, guess what? God gets to do what he wants in salvation. He's doing what he wants. God has a will. Well, you know, he's made his will known. <laughs> he's manifested his will through preaching. See, now he's, it, you can't really know God and separate yourself from his people and say, well, you know, I'm not going to, I don't need to gather together. It's a big thing going, I don't need to gather together. Well, you don't need to go to heaven either. You don't need, if a person tells me they don't love God's people, they're telling me I don't love God. God has a will. See, his will is to gather all things together in one. So, whether I like it or not, I'm going to have to get used to God's people because it, eternity's a long, 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 long time. So we might as well learn to get together here. Now, see, really, I say that. That's, I'm being facetious because when you come into Christ, God puts you into Christ. There is no disunity in Christ. There is none. You come. You don't have to work unity. You are unity. I got the same Christ living in me that's living in you. So when I meet you and I whoever whoever you are, I meet you on the street and I notice. Christ is in you. We're united. Amen. We can get something done, in other words. In salvation, God's doing. No one's forcing God's hand in salvation. You can't, you know, I'm going to bind God's word on him. Like, whatever that means. You're going to bind his word on him? God, this is God's word now. He delights, he delights to work salvation in men. This is his will. I don't have to talk God into saving me. Someone that would send his son, someone that would ask his son to do what the, what the son did for the father. You don't have to talk him into saving anybody. He wants, he, he said, this is what he said now. God's not willing that any should perish, but that all, you want to talk about the purpose of God now, but that all would come to repentance. So see, when a person refuses to repent, they're not in line with the will of God. It's just a, it's just a truth. All right, so we, 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 we're past that. We, we gave up that former, that former way of thinking. We're in line with God now. We want to do his will. We, 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 we see in ourselves we have a, another, another law. And it grieves us. We had it the whole time. It was a time when it didn't grieve you, but now it grieves you. Why? Because God's working his purpose in you. See, God's working in you, both to will. Whose will is he working in you? He's not working your will in you. He's working his will in you. Amen. All right, now there's a great, you pass a great line of demarcation when you realize it is my will to do his will. What happened? You were born again. Because see, the new man, the new man, the new man, that's singular, you know, the new man that's in you, he only wants to do righteousness. He's, he, he's perfect. He can't do no wrong. It's the new man. 
It's Christ in you. The hope of glory. He, he's, he, the new man, driven by the Holy Spirit, will never lead you to do anything outside of the will of God. Ever. He's holy. He's righteous. Well, see, you can't teach somebody. Oh, the law would, will teach us this. The law will teach you. You can't teach somebody to be holy. You can try. But, no, but see, now, a person that's in Christ... They are holy. They are holy. They have desires. Now, see, they, well, I, I'm working on some things. There's some things I'm working on. Yeah, but you're doing it in the context of being saved. The, I'm working on, I'm working out my own salvation because I'm saved. Amen. I got Christ living in me. I, now I can, uh, I can actually put my face towards Jerusalem and say, by God's grace, I'm going to crucify this flesh. Uh, you, you could, you could w maybe want to be religious before Christ moved in, but it's getting it done. That's the problem. Now that Christ has moved in, we can get the work done. We know. Do you know? We know that all things work together for good. Now, isn't that amazing? You can know. You don't have to say, well, I, I sure hope I go to heaven. Well, I sure hope you do too. But it's got to get more than just you hoping that you'll go to heaven. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I, there's more. You can have the full assurance of faith. Why? Because he died and he took away my sins according to the scriptures. And he's going to come back without sin unto all those who are waiting for him. Are you waiting for his son from heaven? See, then what, what, why? Why are you waiting for us to? Because he's living in you. Yeah. See, he's, he's brought us to where we're, we're not in disagreement. We're not a bunch of wayward children. I'm not like them old Israelites of old. Now, there's some things in which I find a familiarity. They were God's people, right? They were the people of God. They had the oracles, right? But I find some things that we were I've been grafted into their tree. Praise God for that. But we had a new heart. We got a heart that's soft. One that God can work with in salvation. One that he can do his will in. It's interesting. As I looked over these scriptures. That that that. There's so much doubt and so much in, in the re religious world today. There's so much doubt. But I come to the conclusion it's because there, there's something fundamentally missing. If a person is consumed with doubt, they're not trusting in God. Nobody, nobody that's trusting in God is going to doubt God. Now, well, but I, I trust him a little bit. Well, we need to grow in that then. Grow in our ability to be able to distrust that God's going to do his will. He's working his will. The scriptures are like his resource that the Holy Spirit uses to, to, to achieve this purpose. But at some point in time, we have to let go of trying to figure it all out ourselves and trust that God's, God's able. He's able to do the work in me. We're talking about salvation now. Now, you know, if you're going to change your oil, you're going to have to do that on your own. But we're talking about matters where you're going to stand perfect in the presence of God. He's got to do the work. Amen. If we're ever going to have the full assurance of faith and good hope through grace, we're going to have to see, believe that God is the effectual worker in salvation, in our salvation. The moment you touch the altar with that hammer, it invalidates the work. You'll have no confidence. See, because it, it all of a sudden it turns into your will. However sanctified you may think that is, it isn't. It's God that's working in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, I do, I do, I do agree that along the way we, we become fellow heirs and fellow see we, we become we're workers together with God he isn't doing it apart from us 
But see, when it matters of salvation, we can't touch the altar. It's got to be Christ. We got to fully 100% depend that he's working his will. Now, along the way, like I said already, you'll come to the place along the way. You'll have milestones where you can make a connection and say, Father, I can see that you've, you've changed my will. I am 100% in agreement with you in this or in that or in that. You can, you can even look back on times when there was a variance. It may have been a slight variance, but any variance when you're talking about salvation can't be good. But see, now you got this kind of confidence. You know that God's called you, right? You, you, you know. You know. You have the hope of his calling. You know, and you can see properly your identity in Christ, that I, God's saving me, not because of who I am, but because who Christ is. See, that's full assurance. You can have full assurance then. Right? You know what is the hope of his calling. These are powerful things. But you know it. It isn't like I'm guessing, I'm sure hope. No. And you can know, you can know that you're making your calling and election sure. Yeah. This has to happen. I mean, I didn't come in with all this understanding, but as you walk with God, you can see that these things are working together for my good. Amen. You also know that he's, he's the one that's working them all together. He didn't say, now you work all things together for your good. Well, that'd be a disaster, wouldn't it? No, I'm going to put it in your hands. Now, I saved you. I, gave you. I gave you righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, you just work out your salvation. You go ahead and, and you, you do it all. And I'll sit back and I'll judge you. Well, that'd be a mess. Romans chapter 9 is teaching us about our identity with God. It starts out talking about Israel's identity with God and how they were, all, they were connected with God. That's why God was interested in them. These were the supernatural people. So see, I can identify with them because we're the supernatural people now. God's working in you. The, Jesus, let me see, get this right. Jesus rose from the dead. <laughs> you can't get any more supernatural than that. He rose from the dead. All right, something even more supernatural than that. You rose from the dead with him. <laughs> You rose from the dead. You're already seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is his will. The will and salvation is that you sit with Christ in heavenly places right now. And if you do, you'll have confidence in the day of judgment. You'll have confidence. You can look right towards the judgment and say, even so, come Lord Jesus. See, yeah, you know better than anybody else on earth what you did. But we know more than that. We know that he's come and taken away our sins. And right now in the presence of the Father, he's there. He's our mediator between God and man. He's interceding for us on your behalf. He's there. So we can come and have confidence and assurance. We can overcome in the day of adversity. See, I've said that three times now. Because we have such a need of overcoming in the day of adversity. If in the day of adversity your faith is weak, the whatever you call religion, you got to do a checkup. Whatever you, whatever you think your power is in, if it can't help you stand when you're tempted to do something that you know is wrong and you give in you got to do a checkup because Jesus has the power and, and see this is his will now it's his will that we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice pure and holy give it to him and when you do what will happen he gives you confidence he gives you assurance I don't care if anybody else in the whole world believes. I'm going to keep on believing. What is that? His will's being worked in you. Amen. Really, that is what it's all about. I mean, eventually we got to give up this body. Yeah. It, it's, it, we we got to give it up. We're going to give it up. 
whether we want to or not. But the good news is we're going to have a new body, a new name. It's going to be a body like unto his glorious body. That's is according to the will of God. This is his purpose. See, now, think about this. Now, God didn't want men to live in a state of alienation. We know this because the first thing he did, does in the garden, they send, he comes and he tells them the awful news. I don't think they realize what happened. He gives them the news, and then he says something so profound. He says, no, lest they put forth their hand and partake of this tree of life and live forever. Oh, it's more, it's even almost, God didn't even want to think about this. That they would live forever in alienation to me? No. So he drove them out of the garden. Sometimes God will drive you out of situations. Drive you out of there. I don't want you in there. What are you doing in there, son? So why, what's God doing that for? It's his purpose for you to be saved. He doesn't want you to be alienated from him. No. He sent his Holy Spirit in your heart. Why? So that you can do what he said to do. So his will will be worked in you. That's Christ in you, the hope of glory. So see, it's not, not of him that willeth. Romans 9, 16. It's not. It's not of him that willeth. Nor of him that runneth. But of God that showed mercy. Pray, God, be merciful. Be merciful. He's, you know, he loves mercy. Our God loves to be merciful. So, you know, sometimes I'll see people and, you know, you can get to where you think you're doing pretty good. I'm, I didn't sin at all last week. <laughs> you probably just sinned. You know, he, he's working salvation in us. He's working it. Okay, not so you can look at somebody else and go, <laughs> yeah, I know who you are. Yeah. See, it's not of him that willeth. It's not of him that runneth. I'm talking about the effective part of salvation isn't anything we did. That's what he's saying. It, he was merciful. We didn't deserve it. Christ deserved it. We, we're getting what he deserved because he took what we deserved. God is in complete control when it comes to the matters of election and foreknowledge. And at no time in the conversation process or the conversion process or conversation process does he abandon his position as God. At no time will God say, would you like to be one of the elect? God doesn't do surveys. You notice that? Men do surveys. And they want to find out what, how do the people think. Because if then they can adjust their position to make the people happy. God's not like that. God is working his purpose. And in the end, now, this was mentioned some time back. In the end, we stand there at the judgment. We see everything that God's done. Because the judgment is going to justify God, right? In the end, see everything that God's done. And we're going to say, well done. Well done. You did. I, I couldn't. I don't have the capacity to even judge my own self right. How am I going to judge if this person should get in or that person should? I have no idea about that. I just have to tell you the truth. I'm about as ignorant as a post when it comes to trying to determine the, the, the heart of another man. That's why, that's why we need to be merciful to one another. We, do, we, we need to. I need to be merciful to my brethren because I... I I misjudge their intentions. I don't see things right. Not so with God. Not so with God. God sees. He'll say things to Jesus like talk to him in parables. Talk to him in parables, son. I've rejected this generation. Well, that's a hard saying. Well, when he said eat my flesh and drink my blood, that was a hard saying too, wasn't it? He said it anyway. Well, when they come back to him, though, he's going to change, right? He's going to be a little secret friendly. Come on. And he says, let me make this clear. You're going to have to eat my flesh and drink my blood or you don't have any eternal life abiding in you. 
See, my point is that Jesus knew what to say. He knew the hearts of all men. See, he, Jesus is in total, 100% control. When he was here as a man, he was in total, 100% control. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. Think about that. You are a very, 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 very special individual if you know the mystery of his will. This is the God of eternity now. And he's made known to you the mystery of his will. Well, in Christ he has. In Christ, if you're in Christ, to some degree, you know the mystery of his will. You know that he's, you know, if you say, well, all I know is that God loved me. Well, you need to grow a little bit because you can know a lot more than that. Amen. You really can. There's a lot more there. God does love you. Okay, there's no question about that. God is love. If anybody loves, it's God. But it's what his love produces in you. You can know the mystery of his will. And it's not a mystery like a spy novel. <laughs> this is something that was not known, and he made it known in Christ. I love thinking about the ages to come. You know, now we, the, 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 as you consider and set your mind on the, 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 the promises, God's given us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be conformed, transformed, right? So as you start thinking about God's promised this, now can anything stop that from happening? Brother Pat said no. Brother Pat said no. If God's going to determine it, it's going to happen. And I say amen to that. Well, see, as you start setting your mind on things above, not on things of the earth, something will happen to you. You'll be transformed, and the next thing you know, you'll start anticipating what God's going to do. Amen. Well, isn't that what he wants? Isn't that what this is all about, this process? Salvation's a process, and the process, in the process, you, you, you get saved. In other words, the world loses its luster. You, you'll be saying, yeah, I know. That's, I know I got to do that. But I'm, excuse me. I'm thinking about heaven right now. I got my mind set on these. He's going to, you didn't know he's going to give me a crown? Oh, you don't want to know why. That's okay. He's going to give me a crown. So I'm sorry I distracted you. No, I don't want to come down. I'm too busy over here working on this wall. What happened? God's wills, it was worked in you to where it has become your desire. Amen. Something that blesses me, and I'm going to end with this, this blessing that Brother Paul did. I love Brother Paul. He's a good brother. Can't wait to meet and shake his hand and tell him, I, I thank you for being faithful, Brother Paul. He said something here. To the Thessalonians, I mean, I, this is in closing about the purpose of God. He said, we give thanks to God always for you, for you all. Making mention of you in our prayers. This is a sanctifying work right here. Just remembering one of the saints in prayers can rescue you. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love. And patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, he was moved by that. In the sight of God and our Father, knowing, brethren, your election of God. Amen. Brother Paul looked at them, and he said, you know, I have observed. I can see that you're elect of God. Amen. I call for a revival of the ability to be able to detect the election of God in a person. How can you do that? That sounds like a big chore, doesn't it? How, how could you possibly be able to look at someone? And so he gives you the formula. We'll just look at it here. Your work of faith, your labor of love, and your patience of hope. He saw Christ in them. He saw they didn't they didn't care what come against them. They were going to worship God. Amen. They were in great distress. And they still gathered more money than anybody else. Paul saw their election of God. Knowing, brethren, 
He's not guessing. It wasn't Paul was guessing. He knew only, only the elect have these kinds of fruits. Knowing, brethren, your election of God, we know from the record here that the trials of these brethren, they were severe. There's no doubt that these blessed words of the apostle Paul strengthen them. Imagine this, you're in great distress. You're tempted to think, has God abandoned us? And a word from Paul comes and he says, I can see you're one of God's elect. What that must have done for them. I, I, can see, I couldn't see it as clearly, but I can see it clear now, Paul. Thank you very much. Thanks for identifying that in me. I've had people identify things in me that I, I didn't see it clearly, but when they did, I could say, yes, praise God, he's working in me both to do in the will of his own good pleasure. Amen. What a great resolve this must have instilled in them. If Paul can see it, praise God, I can see it too. And I can make it sure. Well, I can share some of you with my own findings. And I do this carefully, but with a great amount of certainty. Brother Al Stone or I have seen the effect, the effects and the evidence born in you of God by Christ Jesus. I've witnessed your faith in the furnace of affliction, and I've witnessed your election of God. I've, it, it helped me to see God in you. Amen. See, this is, I want to call a revival of being able to do this. Because, see, that we need to hear these things. Amen. We need to hear these kinds of things. We're in a battleground. Brother Given Blakely, your dedication to the scriptures and effective ministry has revealed to me that God's given you to be a prophet to the churches. I can see it. Nobody has to tell me this. I can see it clearly. And I would say specifically in the area of reviving an understanding of the writings of the Apostle Paul. God's worked this in you so we can all benefit. Amen. Now, see, I could, I could go on and on and on and on about this. And I, 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 I set out to do that, but then I was limited in my time. So I'll just say that the main point that I wanted to make today is that it's no accident that God's working in you. Amen. He's working his will see so if you can identify if you can look inside your, your brother leon can look inside of his heart and say i can see god's working in there it's not by accident it's because in the ages to come god has cut out as it were a place for you in eternity and now he says how am i gonna fit how am i gonna fit him into this he said well through many trials and tribulations I'm going to trim the tree and it's going to fit perfectly in there because that's why he was born. I made him my son. Praise God for Jesus who made it possible for God to work his will in the earth. Thank you, brother.